great Martin de Higo is not a household name. Oh, but he should be. Because there are many who believe that Martin de Higo is the greatest baseball player of all time, black or white. One thing that we do know, he is the most versatile baseball player in the history of the sport. Oh yeah, played all nine positions and played all nine of them well. 1938, he wins the pitching title. He posts an 18 and two record with a microscopic 0.90 ERA. But oh, it gets better. He hits 387 that same season and won the batting title as well. How is it possible that we don't know the name of a player of this magnitude? Now the left fielder, Harvey. The wind of the pitch. That's in there. And this one is off and running. Strike two. Oh and two. And now oh. one and two. Martin Digo, One, so unbelievably versatile, able to play every position oh. on the diamond and at elite levels. Right side, Miller tosses to first, and Digo gets the first out of the inning. Marshall, now in the box, comes up empty with a swing there. That misses oh, the zone, no. and it's a ball and a strike. Chris, that 1938 season in the Mexican League, for Digo to go 18-2 and two pitching and win the batting title at the same time, it's just unthinkable. Yeah, and I mean, the only other guys who've ever done something in the same ballpark are Babe Ruth and Shohei Otani. He could beat you every single day in every way. Reese yeah. in the box now. No balls and a strike. Next pitch is Whoa, downstairs. Wow. And going back to Digo's versatility, Boog, in 1935, the guy started in center field and what batted third about? in the East-West All-Star game. Then he pitched in relief later on. This is way before Shohei Otani no, did something down. similar Ball. in 2021. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And good work there as he gets a 1-2-3. Back now from Hildale Park. Second inning set to go. And now the right fielder, Bell. Digo back to work. A little tardy on that fastball. He's going to have to get it going a little quicker. Get that front foot down. That's the ball. Digo comes to the plate. One and one. Yeehaw. Man, that pitch was dotted. So much talent on display when this guy's out there on the hill. Next pitch is popped up. Makes the catch, and there's one gone. One out. Second inning here, no score. Yeah, Next what? offering is in for a strike. Gonna count one and two. One and two is the count. Next pitch oh. misses, and the count's even at two. Two and two. And he'll step off and take the signs again. Next pitch is inside, and now it's three and two. 
The 3 2 is off the outside edge, and that is ball four. Gardner in the box That's here ball. lets that one go for a ball. Swing and a miss. One, one. one ball, one strike. Hit on the ground, might be two. They get the force. Two away now for Digo. Third out. Back here at the ballpark. Well, here we go. Top of the third scoreless game. Here's the center fielder, Hunter. And first offering is fouled off. Hit on the ground to the right side. Bates oh. takes it himself. One up, one down. Waters one stands in here, takes ball one low. Popped up. Washington coming on. He's got it. Two up, two down. One oh. Digo winds and fires. That one the other way and makes the play, and that's out number three. Martin Digo digging in now. Next offering, pop foul off to the right out of play. Swing and a foul, pushed off to the right. And a pitch. Smoked on the ground a second. Fires over to first. And the first run of the game comes across. The year is 1938 in Mexico. And two pitching combatants are going at it. One was the name of the legendary Satchel Page. The other, a young player from Cuba by the name of Martin De Higo. Toe to toe, blow for blow, in the Mexican heat. They pitch to a one-to-one -one duel when the heat finally gets to Satchel. But De Higo still goes strong. And eventually, it would be Martin De Higo who would handle his own business and hit a walk-off home run to win the game for himself. Martin Digo steps in against Satchel. What a matchup. Martin Digo going up against Satchel Page. It's like Willie Mays facing off against Pedro Martinez. Except, of course, this one actually happened. So cool oh. to relive it right here. 1 0. Satchel kicks and delivers. Wow, no one fair right there. I mean,. That slider didn't move to the very last moment. Incredibly difficult to pick that up. Just kind of have to tip your cap on that pitch. Well, hitter looked pretty comfortable on that swing. Pitchers don't like to see that. Let's see how he changes it up on this next pitch. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Struck him out looking. To the plate. Swing and a ball lifted to center field. And there's one away. Swing and a miss. Got it. In the air out towards right center. Bradley sizes this one up. Flashes. Hacks and misses. It's a. 
in the air out to center. Swing and a miss. Struck. In the air, right field, pretty well struck. Bradley going back, back some more, back some more. He can't get there, it's a base hit. One run is in. Now around third, waving him home. The tag and that swing and that ball smashed on a line. He's there, he's got it. Cuts on it and missed. Got him. And one out now. High fly ball down the left field line. That's back there. It's gone. A young Martin DeHico was not unlike most young baseball players who struggle hitting the curveball. Well, as my friend Buck O'Neill would say when a reporter once asked him, said, Mr. O'Neill, how do you hit a great curveball? Buck O'Neill's reply was, by not missing the fastball. It took a young Martin to go a little while before he caught on to the nuances of trying to hit a curveball. Oh, but when he did, he raked everything. And he was hitting line drives all over the place. He was hitting mammoth home runs that some would estimate would travel as much as 500 feet. He worked himself into being more than just a serviceable hitter of that curveball to the point where he became a great curveball hitter. when he was just 19 years old and a lot of that had to do with hitting curveballs but I don't know that's really good for that age swings and misses and a count is 0-2 after his first two pro seasons Martin hit over 300 in each of the next eight years and it honestly might have been even longer than that since we don't have full records for a bunch of his career just about six years worth there for the out runner scores from third The strong second no inning is a confidence builder for him, a relief for his manager. Doesn't have to get into that bullpen quite as early. For this guy, it's truly a battle when he steps into the box. Only one thing on his mind, seeing that pitch out of the hand and hit it hard somewhere. Pitch. Deagle with a big time blast. That one is long gone. On the ground to short, Marshall. They take the force out. That's the third out, inning over. Martin Digo digging in now. One ball, no strike. Crowd locked in right now. One run game here in the ninth. One-on-one. The 1-1 one -one is fouled off. With two strikes, may see some movement over there at first base, try to stay out of a double play here. And a swing and a miss. Now, and a pitch. And first offering is fouled off. 
Martin Digo was such a good hitter. People said he was struggling because he was batting 261 when he was just 19 years old. And a lot of that had to do with hitting curveballs. But I don't know. That's really good for that age. And there's two away. After his first two pro seasons, Martin hit over 300 in each of the next eight years. And it honestly might have been even longer than that since we don't have full records for a bunch of his career. Just about six years worth. You'll one. Hammer, base hit. And he swings and misses at the initial offering. Up the middle, flips it for one, nope. and two. In time to first for the double play. Digo with a big time blast. That one is long gone. The great Martin De Higo, a throwing arm that many say is not only rival but surpass the arm of Roberto Clemente. To have an arm that was even remotely compared to Roberto Clemente is the ultimate compliment. But to have one that some say surpass Clemente, that's next level. Oh, it just makes you wish you could have seen it. Bottom half of inning number two. Here's Digo. The big lefty turns, kicks, deals. Bounced up the middle. Klein. And quickly yep. one away in the second. Now there's an amazing story about Martin Digo. He was leading off third base, and suddenly he starts yelling at the pitcher ball. Digo with a big time blast. That one is long gone. How crazy was Martin's baseball IQ that he could trick an entire team like he did on that steal of home. I just love how creative players were and how they played the sport back then. It's just too bad we don't have much footage of those games. Chapman now one run game. And that one fouled off. The tying run at the plate. Waves at the bender for the strikeout. Here comes Digo, already one extra base hit on the day. The pitch. And there's a ball. That's high, that's a ball. There's the strike. One and one. Pretty good pitch there to take a rip at. He wants to get his arms extended. He likes the ball away from him a little bit. Just not able to square it up. Swing! Dean Digo stepping into the box. And he deals. And first offering is fouled off. Oh, one one down. Swing and a line drive. Base hit out of the center field. Makes the turn and heads for second. Now the tag at second, and he's out. Trying for two. This to center field. Adam 
Williams puts the squeeze on that one and there's one down. And first offering is fouled off. At the belt and fires. Ripped to third and caught. Throw not in time oh, as he's able to get back to avoid the double play. That one ripped. That's back. And it's gone. Here comes Digo, already one extra base hit on the day. Chapman back to work. Swing and a foul straight back. Righty to the plate. And fouled off. Next offering is fouled back. Well, he knows they don't want to give him anything to hit, but when you've got opportunities to drive in runs, you've got to expand the zone. He's capable of going out there and doing damage with it. The one-two. That one hit to right. Terry moving back for this one. He's got it. Runner tagging for third, and he makes it up to third. Here's a swing and a drive left field, and he knew it. Hammered. Could be extra bases. Around second on his way to third. Headed for the plate. Throw cut off to third. Not in time. He's safe as they jump ahead and run scores. Big swing of the bat right there to give him the lead. That was clutch. He got a backdoor breaking ball. Really easy to give up on that pitch, but he stayed on it and shot it right back in the direction it was breaking from. Really nice no job problem. of letting it travel. Digo, the batter now as he swings and misses for strike one. In the air, right field. Terry on the move. Puts the squeeze on it. What a the pitch. Down the left field line. Could be extra bases. Around first and hustling for second. And he's got a leadoff double. Next pitch has popped up. And puts the squeeze on that one. The big lefty turns, kicks, deals. Digo with a big time blast. That one is long gone. On the ground, could be two. Floyd to second. Ow! The double play ends the inning and might have saved the game for them. Here comes Digo, already one extra base hit on the day. That one out to right. Makes the grab, and that's the inning. Swings and misses. And that's strike one. Out towards right center field. Terry moving under it. Drops into the glove, and that is that. Here's Martin Digo stepping into the box. The wind of the pitch. And there's the strike. Oh, Lifted in the air, right center field. Terry makes the grab on the run. And he deals. On the ground to third. Tosses to first. One up, one down. First and second. Two outs. Here's Digo. And he swings and misses, and it's nothing at one. The 
This one popped up right side. Klein under this one. And there it is. Right side. Terry makes his way towards it. He can't get there. That should be extra bases. And that's a leadoff double. Couldn't have timed it up any better than that. A lot of times in today's game, right fielders are able to get to a ball that stays in like that, but he hit that one pretty well. And if he hits it just a little bit different on the barrel, it's out of here easily. But there's nothing wrong with the extra bases right there. And the tying runs at second base with a double. Montan de Higo grew from a skinny kid from Cuba into a statuesque athlete. Or as Monty Irvin would say, a beautiful ball player. Movie star good looks, tall, strong, one tremendous baseball player. And he speaks to the immense talent that was there in the Negro Leagues. But more importantly, he speaks to the fact that the Negro Leagues did not care what color you were. They welcome any and everyone who could play. Now, here is Martin Digo. And here it comes. And a foul ball. Have you ever caught a foul ball as a fan? Only as a broadcaster, not as a fan. You? I haven't been in many games as a fan. And there's a hit. And the leadoff man aboard. Sutton getting ready to hit. On top of his amazing physical skills, Martin Deagle was a tremendous baseball mind. He managed several of the teams he played for, including the New York Cubans. He swings and misses at the first pitch. 0-1. Yeah, Boog, and that Cubans team you That's mentioned cool. also had Lefty Tion, father one. of future MLB All-Star Louis Tion. And in 1935, they played one of the greatest series ever against the Pittsburgh Crawfords, featuring Satchel Paige, Josh Gibson, Cool Papa Bell, and Oscar Charleston. That must have been a sight to see. Bradley, batting with one down, takes a strike. Fouled off. He was late. The 0-2 from Digo. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And Digo just one out from the shutout now. And now it's going to be Newman. Clips the outside corner. It's 0-1. The 0-1 is outside, and it's a ball and a strike. The 1-1 is fouled off. In the dirt. Gets to it on the first. Ball game. Martin Digo pitches a jam to win it for Hildale. Thanks to the toolage of great Negro League stars like Oscar Charleston, who spent quite a bit of time playing in Cuba, took a young Martin De Higo under his wing and helped teach him the art of playing this game. Martin set new standards there in the Negro Leagues, 
standards that we still tout to this very day. Here's Martin Digo stepping into the box. The pitch. That's the ball. Base is juiced. No outs. Swing and a miss. One and, one. and a count one and one. Ground ball up the middle. Dive, and he's got it. Flips it from the ground. That's one. They complete the double play, but the run scores. It's one nothing. Good pitch right there. Anytime you can get one by a bat of this caliber, especially with runners on, it's got to give you some confidence out there on the mound that you can win this battle. Next one misses, ball, that and that is ball one. So now one and two. One ball, two strikes. Here's a one two. Roll to short, possible two ball. Murray over to second not in time at first it's a fielder's choice Deagle with a big time blast that one is long gone Hall of Famer Buck Leonard, who was a star for the Homestead Grays, made it very clear that by his estimation, the great Martin DeHigo was not only the greatest black baseball player, but the greatest baseball player of any color. El Inmuto, or some would say El Maestro, the master, because he could do it all. He is the only baseball player in the history of our sport to be enshrined into five different countries' baseball halls of fame. He's in the Mexican, Cuban, Venezuelan, Dominican, and in Cooperstown. 